can raise their hands so that uh, moderator of the session, Dr. Purnima, uh, will unmute you and you can ask your queries. Thank you. Dr. Kiran, do we have you here? Yes, ma'am. Okay, sir. So I'll uh, start first and then I'll um, ask you to take over the session. Sure. Anuradha, ma'am, shall I start? Yes, ma'am, please. Okay. A warm welcome to all the participants. Let us begin with the day one sessions. For the first session, I would like to welcome Dr. Kiran Kumar Ruvalakolu, Assistant Dean for Research at University of Petroleum and Energy Studies, UPES, Dehradun. Dr. Kiran has been an enthusiastic person with varied knowledge skills. He is a graduate in technology from Jawaharlal Nehru Technological University in the domain of computer science and engineering. Later, he pursued his research fellowship and degree from University of Sunderland, UK in the domain of neural robotics in the year 2012. His area of expertise is associated with solution development, bio-inspired modeling in artificially intelligent environments using machine learning principles. He has been associated with academic research from last nine years in the connected areas of hybrid intelligence systems and is designated as Assistant Dean for Research at University of Petroleum Energy Studies, Dehradun has made various contributions in the form of technical papers and conferences over the period of time. Recently, a fully functional research lab named Machine Intelligence Research Center, MIRC, has been set up in UPES to conduct and investigate various problem cases related to machine learning and artificial intelligence. As a passionate faculty, he has been teaching subjects related to the domain of artificial intelligence and supported students for empowerment to the new era of AI. His expertise is credited through David Wilson Award for $25,000 for development of low-level power distribution system using hybrid parameter modeling. Today, Dr. Kiran will be presenting his talk on the topic, AI, a sustainable pathway into the future. Over to you, Dr. Kiran, and welcome you. Uh, thank you very much, Purnima, and uh, I just realized that was an interesting <laughs> introduction. Uh, and uh, before we start, I just would like to thank uh, Dr. Anuradha for giving me the opportunity uh, uh, to be a speaker, uh, to be an opening speaker for this particular FDP. And I hope uh, with, the, uh, with, the, with the, the mutual collaboration, we'll be able to make this uh, learning experience a better one. <clears throat> and uh, with further ado, uh, if we can start the presentation, uh, yeah, I hope uh, I hope you all will be able to see the screen. Yes, sir, we can, sir. Can yes, you also yes, yes. Uh, put your video on? Oh, video, just one second. Now. Okay. Right, so it's fine now? Yes, sir. perfectly fine. Thank okay, you, sir. Yeah, fine then. Uh, I think I should share the screen again. The screen is screen is invisible, right? Uh, no, sir. Screen uh, sharing is not visible as yet. Yeah. Now it's fine, I guess. Yes, sir. yes. Sir. Okay, yeah. thank you. Right. Right. Um, 
first of all welcome all to the to the ftp and uh, the introductory session of uh, uh, on ai i'm uh, when i was asked to give a presentation on this particular to be a speaker on particular i was just you know a little bit thought of uh, what kind of topic has to be presented because i feel that ai is not something new these days and moreover i believe all the enthusiasts of the teaching learning process are one way or other aware of ai and what else is there that has to be learned then when i'm going through this particular thought and it i just realized that uh, yes let me give you an experience of uh, the core problem one of the core and fundamental problem on which ai is been actually suffering with uh, to make its mark into a domestic and public domains though we have seen a lot of uh, progress that is made by ai over the period of time let us say as last uh, the more progress been made in the last 10 to 15 years has been concerned still the ai is struggling to make a very significant marks into the public domain all the applications we have seen are more of a privatized or uh, private domains or 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 uh, corporate domains uh, and still having a lot of challenges and issues so that is where i thought like let us look into a prospect of ethical ai or in other words a sustainable ai which is been actually the the fundamental pillar on which ai can make its mark into the society society as a application so with that i came up with the context of ai a sustainable pathway into the future and what exactly i mean by sustainable pathway here is the way that entire entire uh, world is it revolutionizing the context of ai is to be used it as a in some cases as a backbone in some cases as a front end application in some cases as a driver for the entire things to be made or in some cases as a critical decision maker so in that way ai is being used and applied at multiple stages and by the way before we before i continue further if at an i have a tendency to speak faster if at any point of time if you have difficulty in understanding or following it up you can just raise raise your tone okay <clears throat> now so going further uh, a sustainable pathway so because what we are looking forward in here is uh, yes no doubt ai has as uh, as the director has uh, pointed out no doubt ai has a high high impact in 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 modern applications no doubt ai has a uh, good advantages and uh, and scope in the development of various kinds of technological advancements for the modern needs at the same time that we have also seen from the last few decades we have seen so many technologies has been evolved and has also seen a stage where they have been at, at their graves as well but on the other hand ai is a mechanism is actually ai is not a technology ai is a fundamental philosophy and this particular philosophy has its own its own criteria in which it will be able to see as whether whether it will be able to lead to a sustainable future or not a fruitful future or not a future in which both not only the technology will be able to survive but also technology along with along with its uh, uh, users usage society and everything will also be equally coexist and survive or not so that is where that particular our entire this particular session what we are going to be seeing is how can ai be able to use to make a sustainable pathway okay otherwise what i foresee is as a researcher in this particular com in this particular domain of ai what i foresee is if we do not address this particular dimension then just like many other technologies ai will also see its trend towards declining and that is not what the people of ai are looking forward for so <clears throat> so that is where we would like to i mean i would like to bring to your all attention as a new and young researchers in the corresponding segment of ai that technological development should be there but at the same time it should be supported with a sustainable aspect okay in this particular presentation what we are going to be learning about is a little bit of like i said like already you already know about what is ai and each and everything and there is no point in further discussing on this particular points of but what we are looking forward as a primary as objective is transformation what is the what is the what is the dimensions and principles on which the transformation of ai is been happening when i say transformation it is beyond the application okay and at the same time how the current society market 
and the people in the, in that are trying to go for the adaptation of this particular ai in which we will be able to see whether uh, whether uh, what kind of things we have to foresee what kind of things we have to consider and take ahead thereby we will be able to make sure that the adaptation of ai will be effective and the, of course the future of ai where we are heading to and i i i am going to assume that you know before we start the content of this program i assume that we all are pro ai personalities we like the technology of ai we like the philosophy and concept of ai and we are embracing the ai so we are pro towards it and when i say pro i mean by each and every aspect of it pro so so that is where we see that okay yes the ethical ai will also come into the picture and once the ethical aspect of the ai is been found effective then only it will be able to make its mark into the people okay now uh, uh coming to the context of uh, when do you say that uh, you know uh, the fundamental understanding of ai is been concerned ai though we say that it is a philosophical aspect of how intelligence is going to be framed understood designed developed and deployed into a machine at the end of the day is been concerned ai primarily its objective or its goals primarily talks about acquire the information learn the information create the solution out of the information and make sure a ample and judge and, and and effectively judge the decision of the outcome in terms of the solution its applicability feasibility and deployability so in a holistic in a holistic phenomena has been concerned this tasks whatever we have discussed or defined here are not meant to be done by the people are supposed to be done by a machine that is where the complexity of ai com comes up otherwise the phenomena or the philosophical aspect of ai is pretty much simple that talks about that in in one word makes about make a machine smart human not just a human no that is not a, 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 a understanding anymore the machine is supposed to be made a smart human where where the machine will be able to learn from the information here the word experience actually stands for information data past future current anything okay learn from the information through which it will be able to think and create unless there is a context of development of new knowledge creation of new knowledge and for through thinking for different solutions beyond what the solutions provided then the intelligence is of no good first of all because the intelligence of no good when we talk about intelligence we claim the personalities like what do you say uh, 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 albert einstein from uh, from physics and uh, uh, germany has been concerned at the same time if we go further if we, we can see some someone like vishwanath anand from india who is a famous grand master three times in a row now if we compare these particular two personalities we can see the 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 variation of so called intelligence in here the first aspect is yes these two personalities has understood has effectively understood the entire game in this particular case or the most of the physics in this particular case most of the things of course what i mean by physics here is not every part of the physics but the core part of the physics on which that albert einstein has worked on in that he has been effectively understood and he has also discussed analyzed and conducted some experiments and so on same as this in the in the case of vishnu dhanand he has also learned trained played experienced to failures success so on so forth in that way there is a huge amount of learning from experience that the, both the personalities has acquired and by this what they are able to do what they are able to do is they are able to think and create think and create new solutions think here not only just thinking it also comes with analysis okay analysis perform all these kind of things and thereby create new solutions new dimensions on which multiple problems can be addressed if you look at say for example vishnu dhan has been concerned when he is playing chess with another personality say x 
he may or may not use the same solution strategy what he has used he will he will develop keep on developing new new solution strategies that is where his experience his skill comes up his thinking ability comes up and that is what his core of his intelligence the same applies to uh anstein as well and thereby thereby when you come to to speak to judge here what we meant by speak is to express out to communicate here here does not speak does not mean always talk Com- communicate irrespective of who your audience is communicate irrespective of who your audience is can i request the participants to please mute your mic unless you are asking a question thank you so what we are looking forward in here is just create is that kind of creation of new knowledge so new knowledge in this particular case is new solutions new strategies okay now like i said like again to speak here is to communicate communicate in terms of whether it is your uh, your colleagues another machines another set of devices people or any other thing okay to communicate to a, a means through which that particular so called created knowledge can be communicated experience and utilized to judge and make decisions now here comes the final outcome though new knowledge here is been created means new strategy has been created new 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 thoughts new fundamentals new theorems new phenomena has been developed but it is necessary to make sure like which the, which kind of mechanism has to be applied when and where and how if these particular three are not been effectively utilized then there is no point okay that is where the comes of the last stage of intelligence is been concerned so holistically when we see when we see this particular uh, you know ai is been concerned ai always talks about creation of new thing from a huge amount of analysis thought and analysis of information and a lot amount of learning from there through which the solutions the outcomes derived can be effectively judged and applied in a solution state right so any of this particular transformation now as a philosophy it looks very simple and pretty much clear as well on the other hand when we say that okay yeah can we do it that is where a huge amount of challenges starting from very first stage of data acquisition till the last stage which is the decision making a huge amount of challenges are there this particular challenges ha- are the one which has given birth to what we see as different terminologies that have been rounding the internet these days in terms of starting from big data cloud computing uh natural language processing and so on so forth so all these things export systems knowledge based systems what we are seeing is all parts and parcel of only this definition itself okay and now what what is the what is the, i mean i i mean to say like okay i'm not i mean my point is not that you don't know this definition many of you know i just want to make it more and more clear and amplify on what is been needed now let us look at the different dimension of this particular definition <clears throat> the same definition what we see over here is been like the capacity given by humans to machines look at that what was first part the capacity given by humans to machines so when we f- talk about these functionalities all the functionalities been concerned these are the functionalities which the machine is supposed to perform but at the end of the day this is a capacity that has to be provided to a to a machine by humans like means we are the one who has to develop design think and give it to it now how we have to give it to it we have to give it to it in such a fashion not that we will be doing it that the machine has to do it by itself completely by itself and this is where we come across that when we are performing when the humans are been giving this particular so called empowerment to a machine empowerment to a machine so what could be the 
So the advantage of this bottle open that will be able to make a decision that is absolutely fine. But what could be the consequence of it? And that is where the challenge, the, the underlining core fundamental philosophy comes up. In today's world, not only from today, if you look at from the world that has been running from last few years or few decades, few centuries, what we know, every human, whoever has been intelligent is also equally influenceable both in positive and negative ways. So in the same fashion, a machine which has been developed, created by a human being can also be in both the positive and negative impact can be there. And that is the point which we are going to be looking at in this particular context. Now, just a quick glimpse, very quick glimpse. Uh, hello? A very, very quick glimpse of the, uh, you know, uh, the transformation of AI has been concerned. This chart over here that shows what are the various, uh, various things that has been done where we have been up to there. In the last, in the first row, what we have been seeing over there is the establishment, stability, the fundamental definitions starting from uh, Pascal to Charles to where the computer initiation and thereby in the 1943 where the first stage, first, uh, first concrete computational stage of uh, the, the criteria of AI has been made a step as a as the development of uh, uh, artificial neuron replicating the functionality of biological neuron. The moment when we come to that particular context, then the people have started realizing its impact where we can see that, yes, AI, AI, uh, there is a scope for this particular, con this particular uh, philosophy of AI to come to reality. And that is where the entire aspects of uh, 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 AI, what we have been learning, has been started coming out. The criteria of intelligence can be deployed into a machine, the transformation can be feasible, and if I if I see one of the here somewhere in uh, 2000 in 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 uh, in, uh, in 1970s I think in 1970s IBM is the company where they have first uh, uh, started looking forward to make a artificial brain 1970 or early 1980s is the one where they started but means this particular 1943 development of artificial neuron they started looking into can i replicate the artificial brain is can i replicate the natural brain which will be able to perform the entire functionalities of the brain in that way their work in the direction has started and later on of course that particular though the ideology of it has been not a very successful as they have been uh, turned out but that particular work has been taken into the shape of so called watson which has been able to represent, represent and reflect a huge amount of computational power that sometimes is beyond natural brain as well so we evolved all these stages what you see over there that is where we have evolved from all this particular one through that stage where we we have uh, so-called so-called uh, fast and effective machines which will be able to make these particular criteria of artificial AI, uh, sorry, the artificial intelligence into a reality. What we have seen over there that many of the functionalities like to speak, to communicate in their natural language, these things we are already having now. Uh, ability to make a decision, uh, knowledge-based systems, ELISA is the first, first natural language programmed uh, knowledge-based system or in other words, expert system, which has been developed until today. We have so many such systems which have been already been in place, which are able to analyze the information and thereby able to respond based on the requirements. I'm not here quoting the applications of, uh, 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 what do you call this one, uh, Google Assistant or uh, Amazon uh, Alexa or something like that, because these are not expert systems and expert systems, they are only communicators. They are only knowledge dispensers. Okay, they are not expert systems. Expert systems are much more beyond them. Okay, <clears throat> and thereby we have gone to uh, multiple uh, communication assistants over there, starting with Siri and so until now we have uh, from Google, Cortana, Microsoft, and so on. So many have been there. And now we are going towards like, you know, the same thing in terms of communication has been done. Then we are going towards a little bit into decision making things where the right now the highest peak of decision making, what we can see is something called as uh, something called as automation, automated, uh, automated uh, vehicles, robots, drones, 
uh, where they will be uh, uh, rovers where we send them to distant places like mars moon and etc everything so the highest level of uh, automation is what we are looking at in this particular similar kind of context where it comes to decision making systems okay so as far as what i meant to say is as far as the as far as the applications is been concerned that uh, that the technological usage of ai is been concerned we are already we have already made a mark i'm not talking specific here to country like india but i'm talking in general as a technology across the globe entire industry has made a mark starting from tesla to google and everything of uh, in terms of automation uh, uh, many of the countries like uh, apple and microsoft has made the products and other things so many of the applications of ai has been we have seen them as reality but but when it comes to ai is been concerned ai as a functionality to be done like in the previous one we have discussed about though the philosophy sounds very simple as ai constituents there are very huge number of constituencies of this means very large components of it starting from starting from here if we see that particular entire ai gamut has been concerned in the ai gamut we can see starting from linguist to vision image to acoustics to robotics to planning to Uh, 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 forecasting, recommender systems or expert systems, and so on. And as far as these are concerned, the technologies driving these particular systems are typically these technologies, starting from deep learning. I think you already been aware of this particular context of deep learning and uh, uh, traditional neural networks and so on, which have been widely used because of its advantages in terms of. huge amount of learning criteria there is no need of specific learning every time so all the advantages comes up that's why these technologies have been very much stable in terms of all the reality aspects of ai almost all of them the same criteria is also been uh, utilized in the context of data sciences because data sciences is nothing but a underlining technology of what we see as a front end information information processing information uses between these two data sciences will be at the center which will be able to work up in transformation of the raw data into what the users like to see want to see how to see and everything of though these kind of small small technologies such as visualization statistics have been there but however the core thing lies still with the ai itself <coughs> at the same time in the context of if you see robotics has been concerned robotics the 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 uh, the case if you take a case study of uh, say for example sofia i believe you all are familiar with the word sofia which is already been given uh, a citizenship in couple of countries as well the robot so this particular robot if you see that uh, though its uh, physical appearance has been one but the technological appearance in the back end is been concerned so it has been driven by uh, linguistics for uh, interaction and everything of vision for uh, analysis of people identification and each and everything at the same time it is a huge amount of knowledge based system which has been developed in the back end of it which has been driven driven by recommender engines okay huge amount of recommender engines has been there. uh inference engines are the one which have been in the back end but of course it is not a, it is a, it is more of a general communicator it is not of a what do you say an expert system for the kind of context of uh, any diagnosis this in healthcare and so on and so forth no no it is only just a, a simple and variable communicator which will be able to interact with the people right so that's all that is the only thing now if you see again the front end and the back end of it is been concerned the knowledge base has been there interaction front end will be more of a interaction communication transformation using nlp and so on so again in the in, the, in between the public these two we see that uh, inference engines being used as a data science criteria through which the transformation of raw knowledge vision vision acoustic and other sensory related information will be used to 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 drive the inference engine and thereby develop the outcome and it is dissipated the outcome in terms of a linguistic through nlp <coughs> so that is the entire constituencies now if you take the entire gamut of ai is been concerned the various kinds of applications we do the various kind of things to do more or less in one way or other the all these constituents will play a critical role in this particular entire uh, reality of ai <clears throat> okay now now we are coming to the the other challenge now we have seen that as of now is been concerned we have seen that 
Yes, yeah, is 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 a, a philosophy. It has been useful. It has been effective. Its technology has been good. It has been used in various applications, and many applications are on the way. So, what else is left? What else is the actual thing? If everything has been done, why we are not able to see a fully intelligent application? Yeah, roughly, if you see the timeline or uh, or 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 at a point of time when the director has quoted that. AI started somewhere in 1940, so now we are we are we are close to 19 sorry 2020. So over the period of 60 years, till now, why we do not have a completely intelligent, a complete intelligent device machine out there with us? Why we do not have? So that is the question we should be able to look into. And the reason for this, when I am saying, I am not saying this is the only reason, but the Fundamental reason that has been uh, that has been uh, you know obstructing us to make the AI into reality into reality is its adaptation. Okay, adaptation, adaptation of AI into the community. Now, when I say community, it is the people, it is the industry, and it is the technology as well. Remember these three: uh, people, industry, and technology. Both all the three components, all the three components play a very significant role in the success of any fundamental, any fundamental. Of course, there are priorities that we used to be, you know, which one plays a first role or primary role, and so on and so forth. In this particular case, people comes in the last. Okay, people comes in the last because what I meant by people here is the society, not the individual. Okay, it's the society. And then organizations like companies, firms, and each and everything, right? And then technologies. Firms always plays the first role of development of any kind of thing, adaptation of any technology. Firms plays a critical role, and then comes, then comes the second one, which is the market or the technologies and everything off. And third one comes the society because the transformation of if you see any kind of a product that has been with us, it follows this particular. Trail itself, okay. First company, then technology, and then comes with the spectrum. Some people may argue that okay, technology may be the first one because it is the one which has to be developed. Then only the firms will be able to take it. But what I feel is like unless the firm or the company sees a good advantage of a technology, then only they will be able to invest to develop it. Otherwise, they don't. Right now, technology. Look at this example case. AI is there in the market from last 1940s, but it has also been fundamentally has been very powerful, useful, and each and everything has been there. But till now, why we don't? Or till very recent, like you say, like the last decade itself, why don't we have a huge adaptation of it? Why don't we have huge companies taking it? Huge products coming coming into it because of various kinds of things. Companies are not ready to adapt the AI. Because of various kinds of cost factors and each and everything, financial factors and so on, unless they don't see a decent amount of return, companies do not. And after that, once the moment, once after the first, if I say as not very first, but the first commercial product of <coughs> interactive communication from Apple Siri came out, then afterwards many a phones, many a devices, many a companies started adopting this particular interactive way. Why is that? Because that is the first firm which has adopted this particular NLP or other way of communication into a product, and then started developing the technology around it into a shape of Siri. And afterwards, now what has happened? Many other firms started making their own technologies for making the particular things of into a more and more reality, and that is where. Right, so companies, as a, as the first thing comes up, once they see that particular. A potential and uh, on value as in terms of not only as a value in terms of uh, you know uh, uh, philosophy but also value in terms of economical as well financial as well and then they'll be able to develop the technologies around that and so is he in this particular case is a technology or a product is being concerned right so and then comes into the public for adaptation means will public when the when the first phone of apple has been released into the market though this many number of device has came into the market but how many people actually use the the siri application for how much amount of time if you look into that data it has been still lower but now if you see it has actually increased very gradually a lot Okay, and the actual application, though these phones and everything, it looks fancy and all, but most of the application we see in in other commercial productizations, okay, automated systems, self-driving systems, and so on and so forth. 
and that is where the entire context of sorry adoption of a technology comes into the picture right now if you see the first one over there okay increase in the data monetization increase in data monetization huge amount of data why these days even after uh, uh, sorry after uh, mm, i mean in the technology of uh, it has been concerned why still the highest paid job is still a data scientist reason being that the amount of every company is looking for a data scientist every company reason being every company has a huge amount of data and they want a person to understand it analyze it and bring and give them uh, learnings from that one they want people to analyze it all and the data day by day it has been growing not just you know uh, if there is another word beyond exponential that is what is the word it is going like anything for every second we are able to see two petabytes of data is been increasing in the internet for every second two petabytes so if that is the trend we are looking at on a global scale when it comes to markets companies or any organization being concerned how they have to understand so that is where the entire things have been around and around the data now again going back to our fundamental criteria of uh, of uh, uh, ai is been concerned the very first and foremost is what we have talked about is learn from experience learn from experience comes up with learn from experience is nothing but learn the things from the experience in the experience there is a huge amount of information huge amount of data is been there and when we are learning we have to first of all understand that data acquire that data and then learn out of it so learning comes later once i we have the data and this is where if you see the particular line data volume doubles every 2 years and the worst part 90 of them is not used in the other sense 90% of it is garbage and if you see the recent trends is 98% of the data what has been available in the internet or any other data data securing firms has been concerned 98% of it has been useless only 2% to 3% of the data has been actually useful now the question is filtering from that particular entire amount of 98 and each and everything and acquiring that to 2% and afterwards working on them and then making a decision is a very time consuming and challenging that is the challenge first and foremost thing that is what we are going to be experiencing then comes next argument and faster decision making we all know that these days every company every organization every boss in other hand wants a baby to be born not in 9 months they want something to be born in a month or if possible a day also so if that is how the organizations and this is not like i'm not saying any company and this is what the more the companies are looking for a very well known example is the company google or now it is alphabet has funded a project a, a huge amount of funds on uh, quantum computing and after some time they stopped it they stopped the funding and very recent years has been concerned they revoked the funding why is that because they see that okay it is going to take so much amount in the first stage of it they see that it is going to take so much of amount of time and so financially has been concerned from funding that particular product pro, uh, project uh, is costly because its yield will be very long time taking and so on so forth so which means the company is uh, want the baby to be born very early okay so that's what that that is what i i, I meant by you know the, the companies want the things to be done quickly 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 so when it when that is the requirement of it then most of the time most of the time what we will be looking for is decision support systems rather than decision making systems okay decision support systems not the decision making systems that's why it comes up as 40% of businesses in art in 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 uh, in, uh, 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 in artificial intelligence based practices require real time decision support and it is very challenging very challenging because it does take time right it does take time at the same time operation of automation and this is what i have primarily indicated like it took us it took us roughly 6 no 80 years 1940 onwards so close to 80 years and till now we do not have a completely automated uh, or or fully automated uh, uh, device that will be able to you know we can we can leave it like that that will be able to work by itself we do not have reason being 20% of enterprises in this particular segment have prioritized ai for 
productivity gain. Only they look for is productivity gain. They don't look for holistic aspect of it. And how many of the organizations? Only 20% of them. If that is the case where the companies have been looking forward for particular thing, and how do we ensure that the AI will be able to have a huge amount of adaptation? So right now, if we see uh, as as a consult as a summary of this particular slide has been concerned, only 20% 20 per, 20 of organizations have been in the context of utilizing AI, while 40% of the organizations organizations are actually looking forward for decision support from this particular AI or its associated things, while <clears throat> There is a huge amount of junk data which has been not useful, available, that has been used to make a decision. So this is the only current status, and that is the reason why AI is not able to progress to such a potential stage. Okay, as far as if we see that particular uh, context has been concerned. Now look at this one. This is a contradiction over here. Okay. I actually want to, I, I am not sure whether you'll be able to see it completely or not. If you are able to completely see it, it would be very beautiful. Now, this is a contradictory statement to, to contradict this light to what I have shown in the earlier one. Okay, and this information has been coming from digital medicine article that has been published very recently. And what does it show is these are the list of list of products that are purely developed based on the AI, which are hard coded and all the products what you are seeing are duly approved by the medical International Medical Council of America. And these things are already in place and practice. OK, <clears throat> now I don't mean to undermine anyone's knowledge, experience and expertise in particular area, but if you are in the companies or if you are in the academy and everything of many a times what we do is like to when students or somebody else comes up with ideas like okay yeah uh, i want to do face recognition i want to do mri image scanning i want to do oh, x-ray scanning and thereby detected tumor or there blah 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 all these kind of things when it comes up we are including me sometimes we presume that you know, most of the times these are not done in there. But if you see these products over there and the and the, uh, and the description that has been provided, live. If you see this particular one, uh, what is it? Arteries, arteries, mica. This is one liver and lung cancer diagnosis on CT and MRI based. They are actually diagnosing. This is a product which will be able to diagnose both liver and lung cancer based on CT and MRIs. Best thing. And look at the recent one. Echo analysis software, cardiac monitor. We we might have seen that you know many a times when we put the when we put the cardio monitoring system when we see go to the ICU ICUs etc. We can see a device, a small TV kind of thing which will be having this particular beep bump and everything. Out. And most of the times, so what we do is whenever we see that um, the reading will be keep coming up, it will not do anything. But here, cardiac monitor is it actually monitor the heart condition completely there as a holistic of the patient and thereby not only just indicate when the pulse is dropping no that is not what it will do what it does is it actually analyzes the particular monitor and thereby see which is the danger zone which is not the danger zone and depending upon that it will recommend the solution so that is the monitor actually it has been doing and so on so forth if you see all and these and the best part is all these are fda approved Okay, their uh, America's corresponding me uh, medical council approved, and these are the products and devices which have been purely developed on AI based algorithms. And what they have actually approved is they did not approve the product, they approved the algorithm. Now, this is what, what is our starting point. Now, when we talk about a technological thing, you previously we used to have an application or a product kind of things. But here, what is the scientific contribution over is the algorithm. So what the what the AI society has recommended to this particular so-called FDA approval council is that these are the algorithms which are been actually the core functionality of this particular entire product or the task and these are the one that needs safeguarding and they are they are the innovation is particular things of they are the duly IPs means intellectual property is been surrounded around the people and they are been secured and because of those things they are able to utilize them up and thereby the product has been made 
and the product has been duly approved by the medical council and that is the process which has been very effective and successful on the other hand in india we do not yet have the criteria of uh, uh, having an ip on anything related towards software even if it is a traditional algorithm also very limited very huge amount of challenge are been there however india is making to make a mark in the corresponding segment in the coming two years so this is what is the one on one hand what we have seen is uh, only 20% of the companies have been which have been adopting towards ai but on the see on the other hand if you see medical segment over here healthcare segment <coughs> healthcare segment is apart from transportation okay healthcare segment is the one which has effectively used a lot about ai and the contributions they have made are really beautiful and they have been working very well as well so in that way in that way this transportation already you know that what are the outcome i have been making up even the recently that tesla car is also been accepted to be able to come into the indian market with a decent amount of automation so it, and and in uh, in japan and china we have seen already the uh, automated cars have been recently approved to be the taxes in the local regions itself and google is already using uh, its uh, google car as a automatic taxi in its campus and so on so forth in that way many advancements have been coming up both in the in the context of healthcare and in the transportation logistics and so on especially in the context of ai okay now this policy i'll let later now what is the ethical aspect over here now why i i bring these kind of two segments which has been transportation and healthcare is these are the context where the life of an individual is kept at risk okay look at this if i ask you a simple question will you be interested will you be interest oh, sorry will you be feeling comfortable in staying in a house where you have the lock and key and control every appliance by yourself or will you be equally comfortable in a house which is completely driven by ai completely starting from entry to exit to device control to provide provisions for you food recommendation everything control your temperatures acs music all the things will you be comfortable if i stick both of both of these two which one will you be more comfortable which one you will be more comfortable or in other words if i say this book one of when we are going for artificial intelligence what we want what we want is we want the people to be able to use this particular so called technologies the three things what we have talked about firms or companies technologies and uh, people society right firms firms if they see a financial value they will be able to adopt the technology adopt the dolls for particular philosophy of ai technologies if they see that uh, uh, feasibility of it support of this particular ai is been found in nearby technologies been there they will be able to take it but people people will only be able to support technology if they feel if the individual feels comfortable convenient and safe then only a people will be able to use or prefer technology otherwise they don't one one uh, very very well known example in particular case is you all have seen uh, toll booths right toll booths toll booths are there in practice from a very long amount of years if you go from history on the other hand is been concerned if we see uh, there are many a countries who has completely automated toll booth where there will not be even a single individual standing or sitting near that particular toll booth even. but in india if we see any toll booth take any toll booth even if it is a toll booth toll entry of a, uh, a very well known it company also there will be people standing over there why are we not able to simply make a very simple technology automated self automated why reason being now compare all these boxes here compare all all these one trust trust we don't trust it data privacy the, to have automation it should be provided with a lot of data but we are not confident on that that's why we don't provide data privacy continuous governance 
because we don't trust it, we don't we don't give control to it. And then comes to benefit. What is the benefit of having it automated? Because we feel personally, individuals, companies feels that these kind of technologies are threat to us, to our livelihood, to our jobs and all these things. That's why we don't biased or not. They technology will not be biased. Technology will be goal driven. What is the goal given to it? But what we want, we want the, when we entrust the people over there, we want it to be biased at the same time, freedom at risk. When we put technology over there, we feel like what if somebody is going to enter if we if the if the toll booth door gate automatically boom barrier comes automatically and goes off, it will harm the people because we don't trust the technology, we don't have trust in the technology, we will not be able to guarantee safety of it. Right? And, uh, and on the top of spectrum one, AI. Right? So if you see all these other six top three and the second row first three, all the six has been concerned. These six are the challenges where we has as an individual, not only I'm not talking about India over here, in the holistic as a whole, all of us has a lot amount of concerns, lot amount of queries, and lot amount of doubts through which we will not be able to have a strong solution. That's why. That's why we do not have that much amount of, uh, you know, uh, uh, stronghold on these particular things. And why is this happening? This is happening because of such a strong connected based technology. And that is where, that is where the ethical AI comes into the picture. Okay, ethical AI. What does ethical AI say? Ethical AI says like technological development should be should be governed by these principles. Okay, technological development should be governed by these principles. So at every stage, every point of the thing, if we are not, because if you see, if you see if uh, people who are into the AI, they might know a little bit of more. Whenever we talk about, say, for example, the primary goals of AI, apart from what do you say, interaction with the environment, rationality and learning. Apart from these two, the second more important aspect is the rationality, rational behavior. Whenever we bring the rationality criteria into the system in the process of development, in the process of ideation, in the process of design and everything of this entire context of benefit and biasness will be able to come off. So, which means the solution should be developed based on that grounds of rationality. Okay, and that is where that is where because the the, the principles of AI are also been surrounding the natural intelligence to be able to preserve the humanity, humanity not to harm the humanity. That is where we see that usage and adaptation of trustworthiness can be more from the AI fundamental principles. And that's why it says like all these parameters, all these six parameters should be governed by this particular best of AI technologies such as rational behavior, inference mechanisms, <coughs> Okay, knowledge extraction and creation, uh, uh, knowledge representation for various kinds of aspects, thorough and strong decision making systems, decision making is not supposed to decision making systems which are governed by inference engines for the benefit of, you know, uh, social governance or local governance and so on. So when we are been when we are been developing the things under these gamuts, then we will be able to see a very huge amount of advantage towards that. A very huge amount of advantage. Now look at this particular small example case in here. Okay. Now AI is in the market. Now though we are seeing all these segments have been there, this is one reason why what you should understand is why the progress of AI, like I said, like 80 years it took us to to, to the moment it has been coined or ideated to to this particular day and still now we do not have complete thing because we are still at this particular challenges. We are not at resolving these particular challenges. We did make a mark. We did make a little bit of uh, progress in the transformation of these particular things into reality. And that is where we see. <coughs> and that is where we see. Uh, look at this particular slide over here. The Asia Pacific AI market size. AI market size means over the coming years has been concerned uh, uh, how how the how the AI is going to impact the society. 
okay solutions and everything is been concerned look at the look at the significance it has been making from this particular point onwards look at the growth the growth is quite exponential and why this is happening why this is happening is because this one we are able to chase the barriers we are able to find the solutions at multiple stages we have that is where the work that is where the entire demanding of market has been coming up as a different story altogether but because we are able to make they are new laws governed by the governed by various kinds of nations and each and everything and so on and so forth and because of that the market size expectation is going to be huge and this is one thing that shows that yes not only theoretically ai is adaptable ai, AI is useful and significant but the markets means the firms are also coming forward to use this one off the firms are coming forward that means the other supporting and sister technologies are also coming forward to develop associated technologies around the particular firms then only it will be able to come back as a product and now look at this one this is a bit interesting reasons for adopting ai why the organizations are now why the organizations are moving towards there is one more uh, one more chart that i forgot to put over there which has shown that how many organizations have adopted the 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 ai over the past and to the future has been concerned but if you see here look at the, look at this is interesting thing that's why i put it over there ai will allow us to obtain or sustain a competitive advantage competitive advantage and this is the top one why is that because when it comes to ai if you use the criteria of game theory or uh, something like that then you will be able to provide a solution for this particular thing so most of the time whenever we talk about a company company always very few companies are there who look forward for self growth make a new thing and then grow make it thing grow but most of the companies are a kind of copycats kind of copycat that's why we see like okay ai will allow you to obtain a sustain to obtain or sustain a competitive advantage means if a company has been having something like this so what more has to be made what new has to be made against that such that i'll be able to grab the market that became the new trend of companies growth and ai has been potential because of our fundamentally established laws in starting with the min max theorem and so starting from min max theorem till the gameplay the entire theorems the algorithms what we have in the game playing all are the one which are going to be the fundamentally playing over here for that at the same time at the same time ai will allow business to move into new businesses so means once the financial understanding what is the the com market reflection company growth market growth is been concerned then they will be able to give us a new business establishment such as all of a sudden why the when the google when the when the google company is taken over by sundar pichai why it has to be renamed and reached and everything of what advantage they will get and where do where do they get the understanding that if they put a new name and new sister company has been made we will be able to benefit financially and all so that is where the things starts coming into the market at the same time the remain things you already know these particular things where we talk about usually production which i think we come across these particular kind of options like ai will enter into the new market which where they will be able to use new products coming up into the picture <clears throat> okay pressure to reduce cost uh, not always like every time now normally when we see a competitor entering into the market uh, usually what they do is they reduce the cost of the product but ai will enable them like without reducing the cost of the product uh, you still will be able to make profits here ai means that data analysis and each and everything data sciences will be able to see other pathways available and so on so forth so in that way we can see that many organizations first of all for their some of the organizations are, are adopting ai for their survivability as in the existing company and everything some organizations they are using ai to be able to make a new mark into the industry in terms of new products new things supporting things and so on and so forth so in that way <clears throat> if you see the amount of organizations adopting if you see the last line the percentage of respondents who somewhat or strongly agree with the each statement means most of the people who have been the company is on same lines 
at the same time number of companies adopting the ai into the into their organizations I'm not talking about market over here into the organizations is also been increasing automation in the in the organization has been increasing and so on and so forth okay Now, this is a very interesting and impressive slide. Before we come to this, this particular part of the slide, let us look at this particular one. Uh, I hope, I'm sorry that you are not able to read this slide effectively. I'll, uh, I have shared here one, one, one title of the principal AI by Hannah Helligans. This is a, this is a generation of, uh, uh, of, the, of the slide from uh, one of the very uh, famous uh, information centers of Harvard University, where they have analyzed how the adaptation of AI is been effective. And one second. Oh, yes, here. And this is where we see this is the, not this one, sorry, this one, this one. It is the Niti Ayog of India. Okay, Niti Ayog of India. They are able to still make fundamental marks, but not very strong marks over there. Okay. So these are various organizations, various organizations who are not only working, not only working on making AI into the particular things, but as a fundamental, as a philosophy, etc. But they are also making steps, making steps through which you will be able to adopt the AI into multiple contexts. If you see all of these particular things, starting from privacy, accountability, safety and security, transport, transparency, finances, uh, human values and human supportive technology. This is called human centered technology, basically. It means how much of your things has been made towards human centered technology <clears throat> uh, and so on and so forth. So, and at the same time, if you see the last of this particular thing, this, this one is being guided by human rights. So, starting from privacy to human rights. So, all these things, because what it meant, this particular circle actually meant is, in the development of technology, what are the various nations? These are, by the way, these are not companies only, these are also governments and nations. What their fundamentals, what their approach, what is their philosophy on protecting the technology? What is their guidelines? Okay, what are the regulations they have been making in terms of making this particular AI into reality? Reason being, if you see here, one of the challenge what we have with the AI is this one, data under legalities. Legalities is one of the primary challenge. Now, when we go for legalities, how can a legality be resolved? Legality cannot be resolved by an individual. It should be made with a it should be made with a policy, should be made with a regulation and which has been developed by a organ, sorry, by a country, okay, in their particular uh, governance principles, right, like constitutions and so on. So in that particular way, here, this is the cycle, circle reflecting, uh, this is a beautiful article published by the Harvard University and which has been very recent, very recent, which has been indicating that whether there can be a sustainable growth for AI or not. Look at this one. I'm coming back to my first of all title, sustainability over here. Why, why we are, they are looking for so much, they are working so much on the legalities and everything that this many number of countries on this particular direction is because they want to foresee that there can be a sustainable AI because it has AI has huge amount of impact and everything down the line has been concerned. It should flourish. It will be able to make better for the humanity and so on. That's why this particular ref uh, diagram reflecting various countries are able to make the mark. Though our mark has been not that much significant in this particular case, this has been concerned, but there is this this country, this is the one. This is the big, big dots, big dots. This country is the one which has made a very good amount of, you can see the size of the dots over here, very big comparatively under this one. So that is what we are talking about. Because once these things are happened, what does it indicate? It indicates that their, their, their technology, there is an adaptation of the technology can be high in terms of companies, in terms of people and each and everything, right? In terms of, because see, companies at the end of the day will be driven by the product which have been ultimately purchased by the people. If there is a product, suppose look at this one. Why does the why does the organization like Samsung has been very aggressive last few years, last few years? Why there is a uh, suit filed on the um, Samsung by AI? 
why the Samsung has to go to such a state to copy a technology from AI and then use it in one of its product? Why it has to go? The reason being, they see that the huge amount, Apple has has grabbed a lot amount of market, a lot amount of market, and the particular market has been very powerful and potential as well. So to grab the market, what what uh, Samsung has done, it should try to acquire the technology. And after the particular incident, over the period of time, what has it is coming up with its own technology. It has been developing its own technology. So once the adaptation of the company is been there, then automatically it comes up. And this is driven by who? By the people only, because Samsung has seen its sales reducing and Apple sales all of a sudden increasing a lot. Means people have been accepting the technology. Once people are accepting, then the companies also will go along with that. Okay. So in that way, this particular diagram reflects that how the organizations and 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 other thing is all the dots over here, all the countries and organizations, what you see over here, are all are working not only in AI, they are working on ethical AI through which the growth of AI can be, you know, flourished. That is the main thing. They are establishing ground lines, they are establishing fundamentals, they are establishing uh, rules and regulations on which things has to be set. One example case you can see is drones. Drones are very good, yes. The, the moment when the drones are up in the air and running over there, the first thing that comes up is the privacy. Because they have cameras, they can see everything of what about the privacy of any individual. So that is what is the challenges. So unless unless these things are being, this growth is being governed by these kind of principles such as humanitarian values, rights, fundamentals, privacy, security and each and everything of the everything will be able to hinder. Okay, everything will be able to hinder. Now, I think some of them are pinging you. I hope it is not for me. But it's something, uh, something, uh, 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 you know, very urgent. Just, you know, you can use your mic to, to grab the attention. Okay. Now, uh, before we go further, let me come to this particular context of next slide, which has been progress of LP. Now, this is an interesting uh, observation that came up uh, very recently in one of my reading, which talks about, with the adaptation of when the industrial revolution has started from gears to steams to electronics to now the industrial 4.0, which is coming to AI and automation, etc. What has happened is humans have definitely flourished. But how much? How much in what aspects and what dimension? And this one that has been reflecting over here, it shows that the same humanitarian aspect what we are seeing over there, if you see that particular one of till, I mean, it's very interesting to, to observe over here. <clears throat> till 2017, it has been shown as we have broadly flourished. 2017, we have broadly flourished as a humanity in terms of its technology and everything. And the reason why, why they have shown it as broadly flourished is because Till that is the time where a huge amount of automation did not enter into the public. Okay, make it very clear. A huge amount of automation did not enter into the public usage. Automation is there at certain stages, certain times, certain organizations, certain factories, at certain levels only, not entirely. But at the moment of 2017 onwards, we as we are stepping into the Industry 4.0 has been concerned. We are, we are moving towards different directions. That is where in the diagram you can see there is a different kind of a split that has happened about sustainability, business, and society. And interestingly, interestingly, if you see that the third segment of societal has been actually declining. The progress, the miss, the flourishment, what we see here, then sustainable abundance is flourishing a lot. Business are also flourishing a lot. But unfortunately, societal aspects, societal aspects, which means humanitarian values, rights, acceptabilities, support, love, affection, all these things are declining as far as the flourishment has been concerned. And, and <clears throat> a study that is done by the same company in support with the, one of the Harvard's, uh, Harvard's uh, reading group has been concerned. It has shown that uh, 
nowadays the society has been looking into more of individuality and this technology of ai is supporting that particular individuality that's why societal aspects are been collapsing do you agree with that again let me put it society is moving towards individuality more of individuality and AI is supporting the particular individuality because when we say automation, then what is it say? You don't have to live with anybody. You can have a robot in your house and live with it. You don't need to have a plumber or, or, or a helper or anything like that. You can have the technology to do the same job. In that way, it has been more encouraging, secluded, isolated living. By that, what happens? Societal aspect will be able to collapse. And that is where that is where the entire context of this particular uh, uh, flourishment as a humanity is going to be dipping. Now, look at the first one. Sustainable abundance means everything is accessible to everyone because of the technology. Because if you if you if you if you recall, the past little bit has been concerned. Uh, previously, there used to be days where telephone is only available with some people and so on. Now we move to a stage like every, there are many individuals who are having uh, uh, more than one. And there are some cases where they are having more than two also, mobile phones. So in that way, there is a, there is a scope of abundance to at all stages. And with the help of this particular thing, AI, because it's a reachability, connectivity, uh, and its integration with kind of technology and everything, we can see that its reachability will be very high. So in terms of you talk about resources, you talk about uh, support, you talk about technology, you talk about communication, contention, contention and each and everything of, yes, reachability is everywhere, right? Nowadays, the advancements made by AI in terms of transportation and each and everything, now we can see that, okay, yeah, we will be able to move, move up in the air, under the water and everything of, just like that. Okay, that is what is called sustenance and availability. At the same time, business. Expectation is over the period of particular years, the businesses are able to adopt high adaptation of this particular year is there and over the period of time, we can see that a lot amount of growth in the businesses will be there. Either integration, either collectively and so on, there will be a huge amount of growth in the business perspective. But the only thing that has been declining is societal aspects. Societal aspect in terms of multiple things. And that results in a very negative impact of humanity, very negative amount of humanity. And this is the actual reason. This is the actual reason where we can see a collapse of humanity as a race can also happen. Not because of AI will take over. No, that is never true. If this continues, if this trend continues, humanity as a society will be able to perish, not just collapse, but may perish as well. And that's where we can see that, you know, the things what we have envisioned or where many people has envisioned as a, as a, as a cult of AI has been there that will be able to come into reality. Okay. And that is where we again come back. We again come back to how this has to be how this has to be worked out, okay? So if you see the sustainability goals that have been set by United Nations for this particular last two years, set for the time, mm -hmm. the link that has been provided over here, you can see that particular journal article that been been indicating how the AI has assisted in, uh, in the reality of this particular technological goals or sustainability goals set by the UN, United Nations. And in this article, we have seen that, of course, the, 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 the impact, the impact of AI in terms of its uh, products, companies, organizations, technology, <coughs> facilities, support, living, livelihood, okay, environment, resources, all are being concerned. In all these things, the impact of AI is highly positive. Look at this one, highly positive. Overall, overall, it is it is close to 80. It is close to 80 that the 79, 79 is a percent that close to 80 where the impact of AI is there on the society means on a sustainable growth. This has been measured on the sustainable goals set by the United Nations. So 
after this particular measurement, 80% pro positive impact. Yeah, 80% positive impact is able to be made by the AI on these particular goals, which means if we go further, AI will be able to assist if we work hard a little bit and so on. We AI will be able to assist in 100% achievement of those particular goals. Okay, see AI will always be work as a back end. It will not be work able to, able to work as a front end because front end will be the humanitarian pers prospects, humanitarian values. Okay, that will be the interface of this technology. But in the back end, it has to be AI. And at the same time, at the same time, as we discuss positive and negative, we hear that negative impacts of AI also have been visible in terms of 35%. Negative impact of it. And look at this one. On the economy, on the environment, environment is very less on the technology because its uh, impact in in uh, development of new thing has been not there as a hardware which will be able to spoil it off. So that has been so that's why it's compared to less. But on the economy and on the, but on the society, it is high. Economy and society is high because market adaptation is the one which has been challenges being faced over here, and society is the people. OK, people, it's negative impacts. It's like if you see one quote out there in the society, Google, Google car, Google automated car, when it when it entered into the market, it came with a big bang, big bang. But society acceptance will be very less, very less because people rather than excited about the technology, they are more more worried about, oh my God, driver is there. What will happen if I get uh, if I uh, if I was scared whom to tell whom to talk? Whether it will be able to go and hit somebody, what should I, what will happen to me? If it hits somebody, they will uh, take me into the custody or the car into custody or the person who made the car into custody, what will happen to that? So these are the challenges of the people of society. That's why their acceptance will be low. So in that way, there's a need to impact of Spitler as well. So now if you see this particular diagram has been concerned in this particular right, you can see <clears throat> these challenges, both of these particular challenges will be able to handle if we bring, previously we have been working with individuals to technologies only, companies to technologies only, but if we are able to bring government or the national legal bodies and each and everything, governance bodies into the picture, then it is found that the entire impacts will be nullified and we have a huge amount of chance to move from this stage to completely this stage. Okay, and that's where we, we, we can see that technological advancements and new technology for legislation when you say legislation means not only for government but for governance okay for governance technological support from individual to governance okay supported by by uh, legalities and standards and for individuals supported by uh, needs and requirements then what will have they will have they will have positive impact OK, positive impact, especially for their behavior and thereby individuals, the way individuals treat and affect on the environment. At the same time, government challenge on the environment and thereby technological impact in terms of resource on the environment will be very high. So if you see overall here, one thing we can see is. <coughs> association of people to governance to the technological development. These three are the one which will be able to work at the core level here. Remember one thing we are not talking about application development, technology development. No, not that one. We are only talking about adaptation. OK, only talking about adaptation for the adaptation has been concerned. If we are able to bring individuals, government and technological developers into one boat over there in one frame and thereby if we are able to provide synergy between these three parties, then the impact of AI on the society will be high. And because these are governed by policies, legislations and everything of that is what gives assurance for an individual to use. And that also gives the uh, firm's technologies to grow as well. OK, and that is the reason. If you see previous diagrams, previously we have not yet got the governance into the picture. OK, on the other hand, bringing these particular three parties will be highly effective. But but here one thing you have to be very cautious is governance is not that simple and easy to work with. That's why. 
that's why whenever we talk about the future of ai is been concerned there are certain specific traditional concerns that comes up as data security human interaction intervention cognition is been reducing and the trade off okay these are the how do you say more traditional challenges which we have been uh, you know seeing the moment when we talk about ai but as far as the as far as the uh, uh, challenge that has been hindering the adaptive growth of ai is primarily on adaptation ethical stability processing efficiency data and legalities and skilled workforce these five are the hardcore challenges which needs to be addressing and everywhere now if you see in this particular core challenges they are again interrelated workforce will only be able to work if you have a requirement okay a requirement processing efficiency and hardware will be only able to come come back if you have the workforce okay and at the same time this particular workforce and everything will be working for an organization or a company and etc if the company is able to adopt okay adopt technology a company will be able to adopt technology if there is a significant amount of support for data and its legalities in the corresponding country of development or deployment the legalities will only be able to support if there is ethical stability in the philosophy and its working criteria then only the legalities will be able to support and that's why again if we round it off is been concerned the fundamental it is been coming up the challenge primarily is to ethical stability okay ethical stability the more stable the philosophy is the more impact and efficiency it will have agreed at the same time now coming to a more generic perspective or from a individual point of view or from a society point of view what they are looking for after when it comes to ai a society has been looking for superhuman rights because now humans there will be coming up to a superhumans means machines are super intelligence and everything is been coming up so they are looking for next level of it is superhuman rights ultra modern romance here ultra modern romance means the word romance is is actually an interaction between human and a machine how we should interact how effectively we should interact how we should be able to use this one off okay how do we ensure that this particular uh, interaction between human and uh, machine will be safe secure and effective okay we all has to be driven by live long and prosper then only will be able to means positive development of ai has to be there not for negative impact of resistance the more delay we make resistance is costly the more delay we make the more because look at this one one day or other has to be there we have to adapt to this particular thing of the best way is previously we have thought of like okay yeah, online education is very dangerous is not useful it will not be able to have impact it will not be it will have negative impact on the people the learning experience will be spoiled destroyed blah 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 all these things are so called traditional melodramas we used to have but with the help of one situation such as pandemic it made everything a reality about online education online things everything it made a reality of it in one go it has driven the entire planet into the particular side of the world online or digital and now we are without question we are setting ourselves we are putting ourselves into the plan we are going with the problem now and that's why we should not resist anymore because the more we resist we will be perishing look at this way technologically countries like japan america germany are much advanced why they do not the, the neither the people nor the government and everything resist towards that particular technological adaptation because it is costly but in india we are other way around first thing is we look for cost and then the derby we are that is why we are delaying ourselves in terms of progress at many stages until now all of a sudden we have been stepping on on the plating so so we should not resist anymore because it costs us a lot we we will be 10 years 20 years back in the development that should not be there bigger brother here bigger brother actually what i meant by bigger brother is we should treat technology or technology should treat us as a bigger brother there should be a brotherhood between those two then only we will be able to 
flourish together. So, because AI, we're talking about intelligence over here. We should also see the intelligence in the program. We only see the machine in there, then it is very hard to both mutually grow and affect. I don't mean that you also become a robot one day and then work with them, no. That is not my intention as well. But the way we should see the technology is that we should be able to carry along and thereby come forward. I think that's it from my end. And finally, what I would like to conclude is it is necessary that some of us or many of us should work along in the context of ethical AI, not only developing that club, but in the process of framing policies, frameworks, fundamentals, legalities, everything in the particular things, and thereby we should be able to contribute towards the particular ethical AI. And once we come into that particular context, then the true flourishment of AI will be there in the future. Okay. Now, uh, let us uh, let us come back to questions, whatever has been available. From uh, the audience. Thank you for an illuminative informative session, Dr. Kiran. That was an amazing session, session opening session. So we'll be taking questions one by one now. I request all the participants to first raise your hand on the MS Teams and then I'll be uh, I'll unmute you to ask your question. Dear participants, if you have any questions, please raise your hand. Dear participants, if you have any questions, please raise your hand and I'll put you across to the speaker. Dear participants, if you have any questions, please raise your hand. I guess maybe for many of them, it, yes, the answer is Anand Reddy. Uh, Hello, sir. Yeah, hi. Uh, sir, how we can use the uh, A in skin disease detection? The, any standard available data sets? Or there are. The, how many categories? There are, there are, uh, there are, uh, if you go for, uh, say, uh, data science, super data science data sets has been concerned, there are quite a number of uh, uh, image processing based data sets, which comes to skin diseases as well. At the same time, uh, uh, there is a data, there are data sets from, uh, uh, from MIT lab is also been there, which has been its medical, medical, uh, medical AI and medicine. In that one, there you can see some data sets over there. And other thing is, uh, uh, Dr. Dhasari, right? I'm talking to yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, no, not Dr. Dhasari, this color. Okay, okay, okay. A... sure, sure, sure. Okay, then, uh, uh, Mr. Anant, I think, you know, in this case, if if you if you see that there is a value of this popular uh, uh, work in there in the future, I believe you should collaborate with a hospital, with a uh, endo uh, endo related uh, hospital, and thereby mutually come up with the development of a data set. Because in India, we are we are having very less number of data sets. We do not have many functional and established data sets. You should also work towards uh, setting up of a data set because once you make a data set, of course, with the collaboration of the, any uh, uh, um, medical supervision, uh, then your data set, once it has been published, valid and published anywhere, then it becomes standard. Okay, it becomes standard. If the data set has been uh, uh, supervised by any medical doctor and been authenticated by them, it becomes standard. Once you apply any kind of methods and technologies and afterwards, once you publish the data set also anywhere in any open source, whether it comes to Kaggle or anybody, anything over there as a start, then it becomes a standard. It gives benefit for both the hospital and for you as well and your organization as well. Because that is what usually what we do. We make the data sets, we make them available for public use and so on. Okay, so I believe that you should also come up with those kind of things and make sure, you know, the data sets will be hosted either at your home organization or any other organization, what you feel should be available over there. That gives you good scope. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, sir, sir okay, improvements you, we have to done. Questions? Sir, Please can continue, the algorithm? 
improve the algorithm sorry so actually can we means when we are working on this data sets uh, uh, related to the skin whether mm -hmm. we have to go through improvements of the algorithm whatever existence or we have to make a new models then we go for the deep learning see improvement al improvement of algorithm cannot be considered as a potential research yes Thank when you, you talk about potential research there has to be a very significant role of both innovation and contribution novelty and contribution both has to be there if these two things are been not effectively addressed then the the outcome of research will not be much valued so what i would suggest is like okay so you you emphasize your context on the methodology or sorry on model a complete model end to end model not just one part end to end model which will be able to uh, uh, start from uh, acquiring the image on words uh, till uh, giving a decision of about the corresponding uh, disease with the efficiency okay like 90 percent assurance 80 percent assurance 92 percent assurance and so on so in that way you provide it off that gives you much more uh, valued outcome here you can also show the novelty what is new in the thing in terms of its end to end criteria at the same time contribution in terms of your specific model not a improvement but a model which will have potential both has to be there thank you sir thank you very, very much thank you lot sir yeah thank you dr kiran any other questions please raise your hand if you have any questions dear participants dr purnima i would like to ask the question sure ma'am okay uh, sir yeah. uh, generally when we talk about the ai uh, we are talking about the positive use of uh, ai for yes. the cyber security mm. uh could you uh, please tell us is there any limitation of using ai for cyber security i mean as far as uh, uh, security has been concerned there is no limitation as far as just security has been concerned but however when you talk about security in order to provide maximum security <coughs> it also contradicts with privacy okay try to understand the fine line between separating the privacy and security like look at this way if i take an individual for example if i want to safeguard an individual i should know everything about the person right like everything if i want to safeguard the person where the person has been going there will be any challenges or not etc i need to know everything about the person then only i'll be able to provide a very huge amount of security but at the same time when you are knowing a lot of things it is actually contradicting it is actually breaching their privacy also so in this particular case ai is been concerned when we talk about knowledge extraction and uh, export system criteria has been concerned both of these particular two aspects should be effectively utilized in such a fashion that neither the privacy is breached nor the security is compromised okay knowledge extraction criteria which we use should not breach the privacy at the same time when we go for inference engine development and thereby we will be able to make a decision it should not contradict the security of it right Fine, these sir. two Fine. these two has to be effectively then only you will be able to guarantee a huge amount of security for the corresponding entity or organization right right sir thank you so much for answering so so very good morning sir good morning very good morning sir Uh, sir, uh, doubt is nothing but I uh, want some. Hello. Question. Uh, Mr. Vikas, you are not audible. Sir, we have a question from uh, Dr. Ramakrishna. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. Mr. Ramakrishnan, please continue. Hello. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Ah, uh, sir. Uh, actually, uh, I want suggestion about the AI can be used in a micro facial expression detection. So I want okay. the suggestion about this. See, you can use, but when you go for micro facial expression, sir, my doubt. You can use the micro facial expression. Sir, but I think. What uh, methodology you like to use? 
methodology means i think in ai i think deep learning i think see look at this way when you talk about yes, micro sir. facial expression usage where do you want to use what is the end application of it application means uh, suppose some light detection to find okay. out the light detection like uh, any now, uh, how do you, do you think if you are if the if the detection of process is been live live means instantaneous yes. and spontaneous and rich and everything of then deep learning applications uh, yes then deep learning yes, applications yes. does take time it's learning its mm -hmm. analysis depending upon the network size and everything it is a time consuming process so do you think like deep learning is a potential application over here? i mean potential platform for for a solution over here instead of that instead of that oh yes sir right so that is what yes. i'm saying you should understand the context of usage of the of, of the technology then only you should be able to deploy it not do not yes. think in a context like whenever you talk about ai take a deep learning model and then deploy it over there because de deep learning model is a huge expensive in terms of computation cost and computational power right yeah. time and power both of them so utilizing a solution yes. of this particular thing where you require require that uh, you know spontaneous time and so on so uh, wherever there is a time constraint i don't personally suggest ai to be sorry deep learning to be used over there unless unless the application is supposed to be working on a offline mode means not live mode yes, then sir. it is fine but if there is a context of live thing over there then deep learning i personally do not recommend it on the other okay. hand on the other hand if you go for many of the traditional algorithms of yes. image processing acoustic processing and each yes. and everything is been concerned they are they are been effective and they are being used also because of yes. those things only many of the applications are been made so if your recommend if your requirement is quick capture of micro expressions and thereby detailed expression that is been there then you should you should look into that simple or more simplified image processing and that kind of applications through which you, your task will be done yes sir okay makes okay, sense sir. i got it sir i got yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 i will look at on that thank you sir sure yeah giving information Okay, thank you, sir. We have a question on the chat box for you by Hutesh Bhaviskar. His question is: What is the future of AI in wireless technology? <laughs> uh, let me put it this way, uh, Mister. Uh, if you see this network, the area of networking. Personally, if you ask me, like I am not a very big fan of networking. But however, going down the line, this so-called sensor networks wireless networks wired networks almost all these networks will turn at a point or other towards iot because it is going to be one huge one huge networking criteria iot platform and because of more stability in the context of this particular uh, uh, tcp ip and its and its sister protocols all the technology support will be through that only then that shows like there why do you want to have a separate network now when iot kind of mechanism has been there then because it's a size large and rich and everything has been there and challenges are also been there then the deployment of iot or the sorry ai will be there will be come into existence in terms of in terms of localization of your source nodes to destination nodes communication pathways feasibility efficiency failure detections all these things can also be done and the interesting part is many of the people working in this area has already been done these kind of things but however this has been done in terms of smaller modular networks and so on but however going down the line has been concerned like i said like it's going to be one huge network where huge amount of sharing and everything will be coming up into the picture and then people will be working on that huge dimensionality based systems so far wherever you see most of the networks have been concerned their network sizes are comparatively smaller comparatively smaller so the moment you go for much larger networks you come across new challenges new problems will be coming into the picture and those are the one i think you should be able to look into but right now itself if you start working in the proper direction i believe that will be addressed <laughs> 